hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen father we thank you for this evening uh, uh, especially lord these days lord uh, through your word you have been strengthening us and not only us but also lot of people whom we are ministering to lord you are using each one of us uh, um, in in sharing your word sharing your truth with others and empowering them o oh lord not in pu- pushing and uh, not uh, allowing them to, them to go into hopelessness but lord in faith to hold on to the uh, to the, the storm that they are facing and also becoming victorious in uh, against the storm lord we thank you for this power that you have invested in us lord thank you for the um, authority that you have uh, given to us for reminding us oh lord jesus that we are your children lord thank you lord for all the blessings that you have showered in our lives for every blessings we praise and thank you in jesus name amen amen brother johnson over to you brother johnson yeah yeah you are very sleepy today you can probably walk and uh, take the session if you want <laughs> yes. actually i told you today that you please wake me up yeah i woke you up i actually called you twice yeah yeah but then just now i got up yeah not a problem we'll we'll go through yeah <clears throat> so today we can ask a lot of questions so this is the this yeah, today the... you can ask a lot of questions here yeah, that's good. praise god praise god yeah no problem yeah begin oh i did not switch on the mic camera okay okay brother so let us uh, yesterday we were uh, we were uh, discussing about the the proverbs uh, 420 420 and we covered the second point that is the uh, attentive no not attentive incline your ears to incline, my yeah incline incline your ears yes okay yeah that is where uh, we marita can you keep up with the next line incline them before the eyes somebody's mic is making noise can you mute everybody and then restart yeah better now yeah okay marita marita you Can there you who's mic is that there's a humming sound coming on making noise it's the marita fan yeah ओके पापा इन दे पापा ओके 420 420 420 420 बाबा Yeah. Excuse me. My child, be attentive to my words. Incline your ear to my saying. Yeah. Now, we are. Uh, yeah, we finished. Uh, did we finish uh, inclining the ear? Yeah, yeah, ear we finished both. Okay. Now we are at uh, twenty-first line. Do not let them escape from your sight. so keep them right before your eyes yeah. okay yeah now keeping them before your eyes have got two meaning mm. one is keeping the scripture in front of you and mm. two is keeping your or based on the scripture mm. the vision that you make mm. before you mm. so again we come to the question is i can see with my eyes mm. my circumstances Mm. which are negative 
I can see through my natural eyes the scripture that speaks about the promise of God. Now, which one do I choose to keep before my eyes? If I keep my circumstances before my eyes, I end up becoming a thermometer. But if I can keep the word before my eyes in the midst of my situation, then I become a thermostat. So most of the time, people end up becoming a thermometer rather than being a thermostat. Yeah. So if you become a thermostat and you keep the word before your eyes, uh, okay, and you don't allow it to escape from your eyes, then you are a thermostat who is making a demand on those words that you are keeping before your eyes to release the power that will change the circumstances and situation just like the thermometer gives you the reading but a thermostat has the thermometer reading but it doesn't stop there it keeps pressing on with the compressor till the desired temperature is attained so also a person who keeps the word before his eyes now it's not just a letters word before his eyes but a deep revelation, a deep secret, a deep mystery, which is hidden from the world, praise God. Mm. That vision, so, he keeps before his uh, eyes. So, yeah. now with COVID and everything going around, most mm. of the time people keep what before your eyes? Mm. The word of God or mm. keeping the situation before his eyes. So, can you give an example of uh, this uh, in the practical life? How do we, how do we imagine, in the sense, keeping this word in your, in front of your eyes, and then imagining it? What does it mean? Okay, I'll, I'll show you something. Give me two Corinthians four seventeen. Something which is very, very practical in our everyday life. Yeah. Two Corinthians four sixteen. Let's start with sixteen. Yeah, brother, read. So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away. Our inner nature is being renewed, renewed day by day. Means what? Our outer nature is wasting away means what? That's what I'm asking. Hey, because uh, wasting away... Could be you're getting older. Hello, or... are, you, are, you, are you putting the King James? Give him the other version, Baba. Noise yeah, so somebody's dog is about. Just mute everybody, brother, and don't allow one mute. Hmm. Galaxy J7 Tina D'Souza 416. So we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. So our physical body. Hmm is is uh, growing old mm. actually speaking our physical body is going in a journey of getting decayed and and re and coming to a point where it is going to die mm. okay yeah but the beautiful part is that the indwelling presence of christ mm. inside of us mm. is 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 so different inside of a person who is mm. born again. Mm. So his inward man mm. is receiving mm. supernatural strength daily mm. from the word of God. Okay. Okay. Whereas in the same way, his outer self is getting older and older each day. Mm. 
as you said, today is your parents' 50th anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Now, in 50 years, their inner self regarding their covenant of sacrament of marriage mm. is getting stronger and stronger yeah. with the word of God. Yeah. But at the same time, their body is not what it used to be. Yeah. It's getting older each day. Yeah. Praise God. Praise God. So we have inside of us the very presence of Christ. Uh -huh. And this, this presence of Christ is what is melting the wax. Uh -huh. Mountains like wax uh -huh. in, in, in the presence of God. Uh -huh. So when you are facing your situations uh -huh. or when you are being facing trials in your life, we should remember that you're not facing your trials with your own strength. Uh -huh. Instead, you are drawing the strength from your spiritual life uh -huh. that is of Christ uh -huh. who is inside of us. Uh -huh. So that's what in Isaiah uh, 40, 30, it says, do not get to uh, those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Uh, they shall fly like eagles. Uh, okay. Even if they run, they shall not get tired. Uh, Why? Because they have renewed their strength in the Lord. Uh, it is not their own strength, but it is the strength that comes from the Lord. Yeah. So the person's eyes uh, or vision uh, is now so much caught up with the uh, scriptures mm. that the scriptures have become his lifestyle. Mm. So now Jesus has become the author and finisher of the faith. Mm. And people who are fixed on Jesus being the author and finisher of their faith, mm. they, they, even though there are trials, mm. they are able to overcome the trials mm. but not get weary mm. and faint. Mm. Praise God. Praise God. Now, look at the question that you asked me. The next line, 17. 17? Yes, yeah, 17 verse. Okay, I think it is uh, not there. For our... Uh, it is not... Uh, just 2 Corinthians, no? Yeah, 4, 17. Corinthians, 17. Yeah, for our light affliction which is but for a moment worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory so now how many of us believe that affliction works for you affliction god will make affliction work for you if you trust him that is what Nehemiah 13. No, 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 no. Absolutely wrong. Huh? Absolutely wrong. Then what is uh, Nehemiah 13 2 says? For this light momentary affliction, hmm. affliction is something that is coming against you. Yeah. That is coming to destroy you. Hmm. So, so here it is saying preparing us for an eternal weight of glory mm. beyond all measure. In King James it is saying that this affliction is working for you. Mm. So can an affliction work for you? Just put the King James, let him see that also. Mm, I, I have the King James version. Sure. Yeah, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, work for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Praise God. Put the AMPC, Baba. Yeah, read, Baba. For our light momentary affliction is ever more and more, ever more and no, no, more. No, 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 you read the brackets. The bracket is very important. Okay. For our light momentary affliction, this light distress of the passing hour 
is ever more and more abundantly preparing and producing and achieving for us an everlasting weight of glory beyond all measure excessively surpassing all comparisons and all calculations a vast and transcendent glory and blessedness never to cease please lord so so it is saying it is preparing you it is working for you mm. it is producing for you it is achieving for you so mm. it is saying that this affliction is for you not against you now mm. how many of us believe that if a person has got covid it is for him and not against him mm. brother yeah so i don't think any, brother any, jos i don't think any many people believe that brother but the bible is saying whether you believe it or not that doesn't change the truth put the ppt put the ppt translation what is ppt it's a passion translation yeah we, we view view as slight short lived troubles in the light of eternity we see our difficulties as substance that produce for us eternal weight glory far beyond all compassion comparison so, so the bible is saying compared to your life in eternity mm. what problem you are going through now mm. is just a uh, momentary correct so how many people you meet in the hospital are saying this is this affliction is actually working for me mm. and when you are going through brother when you are going through you don't you don't realize it maybe you know some people realize it after they complete that program then they realize okay all these things are good you know good it happened so that but when you go through the, when you are actually on the fire no it's very difficult to for people to understand this Well, that it is will a... only happen, brother, if you understand the truth. Mm. Because the next verse says why it is going to work for you, mm. and why for others mm. is not working for them. Mm. Okay. Now let's say there is a person in mm. whose life there is lots and lots and lots of trouble going on. Mm. Okay. So when does this trouble when will this trouble stop when will this trouble stop when he when he start when he start believing in the word of god that applying his authority using authority the bible is very clear brother faith is the victory for your affliction for that okay okay put put that one one john 5 4 Like you only read it. You only read it. One John five four. Yeah. For whatever is born of God. For whatever is born of God conquers the world, and this is the victory that conquers the world of faith. So when does the season of a person change? when he, when he walks in faith absolutely so when does the somebody's tragedy begins to stop when any sorry when he moves out of faith out of faith or when he walks in faith when he when he when he uh, walks in flesh yes yes i was the one who was feeling sleepy <laughs> no 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 my son came with all the bat and ball i don't know what he want to say no so the affliction starts uh, when you walk in the flesh brother not That necessary not... when you walk in flesh now now you mean to say jesus going to the cross was jesus walking in the flesh no he no that is not uh, yeah that is also right you are saying what is in his right so affliction will come to you as long Even as you are breathing oxygen the affliction will come as long as you are living in this world the affliction will come that's why jesus said tribulations will surely come yeah but you do not fear the words that i have spoken to you will give you life yes and you be of good cheer 
Because yeah. I have overcome the world. So how? So so when, how huh? What is the answer that uh, to your question? How do I? So, so a person who is going through affliction, uh -huh. or a person who is going through troubles in life, uh -huh. there are some people who are saying, "These troubles have not left me from so many years." Yes. Have you heard that? Yes. One after the one after another, tragedy after tragedy after tragedy. Yes. Have you heard that? Yes. Now the question is: Is this person applying faith or sight? Sight. So if he is a thermometer, will the problems increase more or less? It will increase more. Because a thermometer will give out the reading out of his mouth. Correct. So when the person is speaking what he is seeing mm. and what he is sensing and is living by sight, he is prophesying his own death, his yes. own self-destruction. Yes. But the same person now in the midst of affliction is no longer talking what he is going through, but is talking about what Jesus went through to save him and is yeah. picking up the promises of Jesus for him on the cross. Yeah. So now that person is no longer speaking his, his weakness or his fears or his um, afflictions, but is looking right eye to eye contact with the affliction and speaking the promises of God yeah. and destroying that affliction. Yeah. So affliction will definitely come. So there is no yes. options uh, yes. for believers or non-believers. Yes. Whether you are a believer does not mean that you will not have affliction. Now handling that affliction is where the, your victory comes in. So yes. when you when you are in the word which produces faith, then your uh, your handling of that affliction will be totally different. Now 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 again that faith. Hmm. The faith is of two kinds. No, one is the Bible faith and one is the human faith. Correct. So a person may say, I've got faith. Hmm. But when the affliction comes, that person talks like a thermometer. Correct. Now, will that affliction work for him or against him? Against him. So the question is not how much Bible you know. How much of the Bible that you know, you are believing in and applying it and you are setting your mind mm. like a thermostat. Mm. Mm. And if that thermostat attitude is not there, then it will never turn into glory. Yeah. Let, let me give you an example. Thermostat, okay? Mm. Jesus saw a blind man. Mm. Did he say you are blind or did he say receive sight? Receive sight. He saw a crippled man. Did he say you are crippled or did he say pick up your mat, rise up and walk? Pick up your mat and rise up and walk. He saw a man with a withered hand. Did he say you got withered hand? Or did he say stretch forth your hand? Stretch forth your hand. He saw Jairus' daughter is dead. Did he say she's dead? Or she is saying, little, little girl, get up. Little girl, get up. So you see, Jesus is not speaking what he sees. He is speaking what he wants to see. Mm. And that is called as faith. Mm. That is a beautiful explanation so which means which means uh, the actual uh, demonstration of faith or expression of faith is not what is also involved in saying what you wanted to see right it is not just uh, it is not just believing in your heart uh, and maybe proclaiming the word that is not just that but also what is that you wanted to see in that situation? That is what yes. uh, hmm. yes. Rosalyn so has uh, picked, uh, raised, uh, raised her hand. Rosalyn, you wanted to ask a question? Yes, Rosalyn? Uh, Rosalyn? Hello? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Can you hear you? Yeah. Can you? Um, brother, uh, just now um, I was just listening to this that you know about uh, Jesus healing uh, the sick. So um, I have just I'm just new to uh, the Word of God, not new in sense understanding the Word of God. We were reading Bible earlier also, but not understanding what the Word of God actually is trying to say. 
So I'm very new to all this. I'm still learning. And uh, my daughter has been diagnosed with a tumor. We are praying for her as well. Uh, since the time my daughter has fallen sick, um, a lot of people have been calling me to reach the word of God. And a lot of people have been talking about the word of God. I, I got a call yesterday. The reason why I raised my hand is because right now we were talking about this is feeling uh, the sick. Uh, this, this lady who spoke to me yesterday from some group, she happened to ask me this question that you have heard in the parables, in the, in the gospel, that you just kept keep feeling a lot of sick people. Then why is it that um, the healing has not gone away completely? So if he is a blind man, he says that you can see, you'll see now, so you see. So he, he's okay. But then, that does not mean that uh, the sickness is gone away. The sickness is still in the people, in the world. Why is the sickness not gone away? I do not have any answer because, again, like I said, I'm, I'm also new. So I wanted to ask this question to someone from your group as well. I mean, to someone from, uh, you know, even Sister Clara who's ministering me. I wanted to ask her this today, but uh, she do normally speak in the evenings. According to me. So what is the question, brother? Did you hear it clearly? Yeah, so the question is that, uh, see, the sickness uh, is still there in the world, is what, uh, you know, the question. Why yes. the sickness has not gone away? Yes. Okay. The sickness has not gone away because uh, Satan is still ruling over the world. He's still the God of this world. Jesus came and established the spiritual kingdom and he has given the power and authority to you and me to destroy the sickness from each and every body. But we have failed to do our job. We have failed to exercise our faith. Whereas the early Christians, they went around healing the sick. Now in this generation, we don't heal the sick. We pray for the sick. That's absolutely wrong. So if we are not following the system, how will the sickness go? Right. So the answer you are in, now in, the, in the early church, Jesus never gave them the power to go and pray for the sick. He gave them the power to heal the sick. Correct. So you said you your daughter has got a problem, something, right? Yes, yes, sir. So now, a, a, as per the word of God, you have yes, been given yes. the authority to, to tremble down snakes and scorpions and to overcome the powers of the enemy. Now, how much are you first building up yourself, understanding the kingdom of God? Because the Bible says, seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added unto you. Yes. How much are you uh, growing your faith like a farmer who's growing his faith? Because the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, for example, if I'm talking so much of the word of God, do you mean to say I got this from heaven? Or did I had to learn and labor and put my investment time, my time in studying the scriptures? Just to your time. So yeah, if a person is a doctor, you mean to say one fine morning he got up and he became a doctor? Or did he have to put in a lot of time and, and his priorities in that one direction to become a doctor? Yes, you have to put them a lot of So, so what are you investing to build up your faith? I am, I am learning the word of God, and I am because to... because the Bible is very clear. Yes. If you want victory, it is your faith that will give you victory. Yes, and faith it. comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, where you are listening to the teachings, where you are listening to the preaching where you're listening to the word and understanding the truth. And that truth will come only when you continue in the word. Absolutely. So on one side, as I told you, this affliction will work for us. Jesus said, on one side is what you can see in your child. On the other side is what you can see in the word. So your yeah. eyes are fixed on what? You might say my eyes are fixed on word. If your eyes are fixed on word, you won't have worry. You won't have anxiety. In fact, you'll be excited that according to the word, your baby is already healed. 
So there is one thing to say, by the wounds of Jesus, I'm healed. And the other thing is to say, Lord Jesus, I believe from my heart that my baby is completely healed. Why are you saying that? Because I've spent so many hours in what the Lord has said, in meditating and speaking the word by his stripes we were healed, that I have the total picture of what he said. So the word of God is saying his word is the light. So if his word is the light, how much of that word light has, has been filled in my heart and in my mouth and in my mind that I am confident in what the Lord has said. And I'm fighting the battle against all symptoms, all, um, all um, uh, reports and standing on the truth. That, so that, that battle of faith is going to work for you. I've been fighting this day and that I've been fighting myself because my, but, but my body... But see, 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 the fighting is based on how, what level are you at rest? How much are you at rest? That means you have fought the battle. If you are restless, that means you have not even got into the battle. So, so the, so the uh, affliction will work for those who have entered into the rest by taking the promises of God on one side and those who have the promises but are worried, anxious, stressed out, fearful. Now, when this happens, the affliction will not work for you. In fact, it's working against you. So, this particular trouble working for me or against me is depending on my own response to that affliction. And that is why faith is an ongoing journey of your fellowship with God through his word where you are seeing with your eyes of faith what God has already achieved for you on the cross and now all that you are doing is you are taking a corresponding action to what he has already achieved for you on the cross. So that this... understanding, that confidence, that, that intimacy with God is what gives you results. So, so this rest, rest means peace, you know, isn't it, brother? The peace that rest, rules rest your heart. Means, rest means the in your peace. mind. There is no unbelief. Ah. Okay. The Israelites could not enter the promised land, not because God did not want them to enter. Yeah. It was God's desire for them to enter. Mm. But it was their own unbelief that made them restless in their mind. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, it is you who labor to enter into rest. Mm. So for you to enter into rest, is that mm. first you have been so attentive to the word, mm. second you are submissive to the word. Mm. So now with these two, you are assisting the lies of the devil, mm. and you are fixed on looking and continue to look at what God has promised you. Mm. Praise God. So now you are becoming a person who does not live by sight but lives by faith. Mm. So for whom will the affliction turn into, a, into glory? Those who do not look at things which are seen, but look at things which are unseen. That's what 2 Corinthians 4 verse 18 says. And a whole Christian life is how quickly can I get into this lifestyle of believing and looking at things not seen. You can pray throughout the day but you're looking at things which are seen, you will still lose the battle. But you are praying, and even though you have got everything around you like a storm, but still you are looking to things not seen. Okay, read, brother. Uh, because we look at, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. So which one For do we what see? Can our lifestyle is yeah. what, what? What we cannot. 
what we can see is what so all your academics in school was taught what look at what you see when you went to the university what was taught look at what we see in the company that you are working what are they doing look at what you see but in the sales division what are they doing oh look at what they cannot see you see the sales division yeah. is using the system of the word of god of the kingdom of god yeah. and giving you figures which and every day they are saying i want you to look at that figure and say to yourself i am going to achieve it what are they teaching you fake yeah and, and the figure that they give you is beyond your capacity beyond your ability and you begin to wonder in this economy can you get that they say we don't know you make that vision you make that goal and now put everything possible to achieve that goal speak to yourself that you can do it and that is come by now do positive thinking and positive speaking have you heard that yes so does it work hello does it work it works uh, brother uh, but it is uh, momentary i guess <laughs> it works it works but there is no guarantee yes because there is no no uh no promise yeah to anchor the mind which is running in all direction yeah so the only thing that you will get to anchor your your soul or your mind mm. is the promise of god yeah so my question is as a christian how many people are growing or being developed or their lifestyle is based on things looking to things not seen or looking to things seen yeah everybody looks at things uh, seen but what about the early church yeah they were looking at things that cannot be seen jose yeah. really and completely relying on the promises of god yeah rose you are saying something i think uh, roselyn said her child her daughter has got a tumor which brother may not have heard so probably she needs to use this filter like jesus Jesus cursed the fig tree, and so she should curse that tumor, and it will it will disappear. She should keep on repeating it, and also God's word, Isaiah fifty five eleven, the word will not return empty unless it accomplishes. So I don't think brother heard what her the child's problem is. To so, use the right so, scripture, so, so the mother, along with the daughter, can teach. that this is the system by which we can get supernatural result okay so what what my sister said that she can curse the fig tree because that jesus said the very things that i did you will do also if you believe in me and you will do even greater things than that because i am going to the father so if you believe all this what jesus said and the word abides in you then now you are in the in the in the driving seat because your faith conquers the world faith is believing what god said not what your circumstances say so if you believe what god said then the very next moment you are rejoicing so how many people do you think are growing their christian life by living by faith and not by sight how many people are saying the bible says all those things that i see are temporary so if i saw the report which said tumor i can say tumor i just saw you and the bible says everything that is seen is temporary hmm so will the person laugh at the tumor and say anyway you are temporary and i have cursed you and you are dead in jesus name now even though the person can see that tumor that person is laughing rejoicing and thanking god that the tumor has been destroyed now 
when the person is using this kind of method, it is just like a pilot who has taken the plane on the runway and is putting all the power and accelerating to a speed where now the aeroplane will get a pressure on the wings that will lift it up from the ground. If he doesn't put in that much acceleration, then the air cannot build the pressure on the wings. The plane cannot fly. So the pilot on the runway is accelerating and within few seconds, the plane is reaching the end of the runway. If it doesn't have the speed, then it will reach the end of the runway but never fly. But if there is a speed, then halfway through, it has taken a lift from the ground and it is flying. So Christian person is a person who has taken his life on the runway and now is firing all the scriptures that he knows and to bring his mind to rest. So the longer the mind is at rest, he is at peace. He is believing. And it is that believing that lifts him up over tumor, over cancer, over different afflictions and brings forth the result. Yeah. Whether I are able to hear again, I agree and I understand whatever you said is absolutely what needs to be done. But uh, for a mother, you know, when the doctors are saying that your child will not survive for even a year because of this problem, even though I'm trying to keep myself strong with the word of God somewhere, you know, I, it breaks it breaks you emotionally. Sister, so, sister, I'll ask you a question. You might be saying this is too hard. Let me ask you. I'm having coffee here. If my wife has not added sugar, will I know it? Yes, if you taste it. How will I know it? Unless you taste it, you won't know. Yeah, yeah, I, I tasted it. And, and how will I know it? That she has not added sugar. You won't get because the taste, the taste is bitter. bitter. The yes. taste is bitter. Now, because the taste is bitter, I, I should I ask my wife to get and put some sugar or keep on crying that the coffee is bitter? Because the sugar is available. Yes. So what happens if every day I sit and I cry that the coffee is bitter but never ask for sugar? But one day I make a decision, enough is enough. I will go to the kitchen and myself pick up the, the jar, remove the sugar and put in as much as I need and now taste the coffee. Now has my coffee become sweet? Yes. So in the same way, every day she is serving me bitter coffee. Can I go to the kitchen and put sugar and make my coffee sweet? Yes. So no matter what she is serving, does that mean I have to drink the same coffee or I can add sugar? You can add sugar. So no matter what life is throwing at you, can you add the word of God and make your life sweet? Yes, I can. Now can you say, but I am a mother, how should I add? No. In the I same way, if you are saying I'm a mother or I'm doing this and I'm that, listen, the, the system does not understand all those things. The system doesn't work on feelings. The system doesn't work on senses. The system works on truth. So, so the day you realize that this system in the kingdom of God doesn't operate through feelings, but operates through the word, then you are no longer living your life on feelings, but you are living your life by being the doer of the word. Yes. So feelings will, will break you down. Feelings will make you weak and feelings will take you on the wrong side. That's why the just shall live by faith and not by sight not by feelings, not by emotions, but by the word of God. 
But in which scripture can I refer to to build my faith? See, much more than the scripture to. that you can speak, no? First, understand the application and the principles. Yes. We will say, which, which scripture should I pray uh, before I start driving the car? Let's say I give you all the scriptures and you don't, you have not learned the skill of driving. Will you still cause an accident? No. Yes, you can even with an accident. You, now you have not yet managed how to put the gears and you don't know which one, which gear to put when. Will you, is there a chance of putting reverse gear and looking in front and praying Psalm 91 and pressing the accelerator? Hello? Yes, sir. What would you do if you are putting a reverse gear and saying yes. Psalm 91 and all the prayers and then you are looking in front and pressing the accelerator? It will still go behind. You know, it sometimes people say when they are going for driving license, they will say, please pray that I get the license. I said, this area I won't pray. <laughs> because if I pray and you do get the license and you are not skilled enough, you will not only kill yourself, you will kill so many on the road. Yes, yes, brother. Huh? Yes, you are right. So you should be careful in what prayers you are doing. And if you are in Dubai and on Sheikh Zayed Road, and if you take a, you cross the lane on left or right, because you panicked, do you know how many cars will go flying within two minutes? Nothing less than 70, 80 cars will go off, off, the, off the road. But they are going at 130, 140. No chance for them to even apply the brakes. Even applying the brakes, the car will go like a somersault. That's why when they are in Dubai, they say that I have to pass the trash. I fail, I fail. Why are they not passing? Because they are not passing you. Because you might cause so much of murder to so many people. Because in that system over there, if an Indian license holder goes there, where our auto rickshaws are going from right to left, have you seen? Yeah. Huh? There's no system. Instead of showing the light, he'll put his hand or his leg out. <laughs> now, such kind of driving will cause how many deaths every day? Now you can understand about the traffic. In the same way, in the spiritual realm, there is a traffic. The Lord's traffic, angels, and the demonic traffic on the other side. Your response is activating those, those traffic to work for you or against you. The devil is saying, everybody should understand the feelings. And all that. The devil wants you to go into that. Why? Because you are going to open your mouth and activate demonic influence bringing self-destruction in your own life. But the same mother understands the principles, the application, and then she starts firing the bullets. She can kill the tumor in no time. Yes, brother. If the mothers who have got autism children Okay, where medical report says no chance. These mothers have become fighters and got their children back into a normal certificate certified by the medical doctors. If these mothers can do it, what about us? We can also do it. Ah. But because I don't know the system, I'm lost. But now when you go on the YouTube and learn from these mothers, what did they do? And do exactly what they did because the system works for everybody the same. Yes. When you bought a laptop, the keyboard of your laptop and my laptop, the keyboard is the same? Yes. So you are a good typing skill and I'm putting one one figure. Now will I say the laptop is bad? Because I finished only one, one line in 30 minutes and you finished so many pages? Your laptop is good. Is it the laptop good or your operating skills are good? The laptop is good. Your operating skill matters. Huh? The laptop is good, but your operating skill matters. Ah, 
in the same way your operating skill of faith matters yes yes ah. so you say i'm just a mother laptop please understand me no? i'm just a mother you try and stand you before joining zoom no you you tell the laptop see i'm just a mother please help me okay and you put some one digit wrong in your id will you ever enter into this room never Ah, yeah. it is the same please understand it is the same when it comes to the system in the spiritual realm in fact the spiritual realm is more accurate than the natural realm because that's how the earth the mars all these planets are in the same position for years together the level of gravity does not vary is the same yes brother did you get that Yes, brother. Yes. So please go on the YouTube. First, first, get the teachings right. Get the yes. understanding right. Get the faith right. It's not how many scriptures you said. It is how much of the application and the system you learned of what Jesus has already finished on the cross. Just get that right of what is Jesus, who is Jesus, and what is his go his purpose in your life. and what yes. does he want you to what does he want you to have and how much he loves yes, you yes sir and that you can get that. by understanding the scriptures so even if you say for 20 25 days you did not pray but you are studying like you're studying in a in a for your exams and as you are studying every day there is a question paper every day and when the questions are asked by life you are responding with what you learned do you know what is success success is a person is getting into preparation first practicing and training and then very important there comes a test in that test if he responded with what he has been learning and practicing the answer equal is called success but when the test came and he did not respond the way the lord wanted him to respond the result is so passing the test or failing the test is not based on the test but your response to the test yes yes so your fuel of your baby is not with god it's not with the devil it's not with the doctor but your response whether you go respond with faith whether you respond it with fear that response is going to decide the future of your baby yes yes brother so once you understand that now you are not even bothered about anybody you are saying i am going to go into divine healing divine healing is faith healing where you are more focused on the promises of god and now that doesn't mean you don't take the medicine the medicine is doing its job but you are going to divine what this medicine cannot achieve divine can achieve in no time please go yes yes brother but if you say no i am only a mother i am feeling this you have already said you are a victim right in the war does all that work no no in not. the war you have to pick up your sword and get into a fight and the bible yes. says we as christian got to be violent and take the kingdom of god by force and if you're not violent in your faith then that will kill you one person will get killed either that affliction will kill you or you will kill the affliction and god has given us the power to kill the affliction and the power that he has given us is called faith the yes. faith is going to give me victory in every area of my life which is the top topic that i should study day and night hello yes if faith is going to give me with you over every affliction of my life then which is the topic that i should study day and night faith yes yes so the more and more you study on faith and the principles of faith and you keep on practicing faith you don't do any other thing only practice faith look at your life supernatural yes brother. yes brother i will do and and somebody everything else but doesn't know what is faith 
His life is miserable. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Our, our response, our, our response uh, to the situation is what is going to what is the biggest. Yes, sir, yes, yes, yes. Yes. Hmm. Yes. Your yes. response is what is going to decide your future. In simple. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So if somebody says, now if I have to ask the sister, sister, do you believe your future is in God's hand? Yes. Tell me honestly. Yes. <laughs> That's where you went wrong. Yeah. Your future is not in God's hand. Okay. That's what we were taught, yeah, from childhood, and yeah, that's why we keep thought for everything. Yeah. God is saying, "Your future is in your hand. You exercise your faith. You are victorious. Yes. You exercise your fear. You are a victim." Yes, yes, that's right. Huh? That's right. We were, we were going wrong. Like so, if your philosophy is wrong. Because we all have our own philosophies. If your philosophy is wrong, then everything in your life is wrong. Then you ended up becoming a thermometer. But if your philosophy is based on Bible, and that too on grace, not on the law, you are going to live a beautiful, victorious life every day of your life. Yes. So the new covenant is a covenant of grace. Not the covenant of law. And yes. grace is already given to us. Praise God. Yeah. So what did you see with your eyes now? Victory. How did you see with victory? Because it has already been accomplished on the cross for me. Now that victory that I've seen, my eyes are fixed on that victory that Jesus has earned for me on the cross and I'm not shaking anywhere right or left but that's my inheritance. So what is the devil's job? His job is to put pressure on me so that I begin to get worried. Worry is the proof that I'm going to lose the match because I'm operating in unbelief. The flight is going to crash. If I don't deal with that worry quickly, that flight is going to crash. That worry is a uh, indication that I'm moving in the wrong direction. Have you have you ever heard a word called pain? Yes. Is pain good or bad? Bad, very bad. Very bad. But actually speaking, if you use pain in the right way, you will profit a lot. When does a person get pain? When, when things are in disorder. Yeah. So pain is what? Pain is saying, before the big disaster can come, there is disorder. You better put things in order to avoid the disaster. So pain is a warning going before the disaster can come up. And that is why, okay, now, now let's say, I am causing you pain, okay? And I'm working in your office. Who needs to change? I need to change. Let me ask Jos, 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 let me ask Jos now. Jos, I know you were busy, but it's okay. Mm. Uh, but now I want to ask you, mm. if I and you are working in the office and I'm causing you pain, Hmm. Okay, with my action. Yeah. Who needs to change? I need to change. What? Yeah, my uh, response is what will make uh, the whole <laughs> difference. Yeah. Just suffering, brother. Just suffering. <laughs> I'm just suffering. Sorry. <laughs> so, 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 all these years, what did we learn? Have you ever heard a wife saying, from the day I got married to this man, my life became miserable? Yes. <laughs> you have heard that? Yes. My wife I'm has not asked. I am not asking not, where. Not I am not where asking I, where. I have heard. I am not asking where. But you have heard it, right? Yes. Where is the wife right in a dialogue? Wife is. Uh, wife is. Uh, no, she is not right. Because she has already accepted. Yeah. She has already accepted. She has the that chance. His actions. 
yeah. are re- ruling over her life, yeah. which is not true. Yeah. Her response to his action has what has made a de- live a defeated life. Absolutely. But if she is going to live a life of faith, yeah. Okay, can she win over that life? Yes, she can win over. And that's exactly what happened in my life. Mm. She she operated on the system of the kingdom. Mm. She changed me. Yeah. If she's not operating on the kingdom, then I will change her. Mm. Are you understanding? So yes. one is in the Lord, one is in the world. The world fellow is irritating the one in the kingdom. Now the one in the kingdom is not operating under the kingdom rules, but operating on the feeling rules. Now, this person is going to pain and in the pain, the person is frustrated and now the person is like a thermometer talking day and night. Yeah. Now, both of them are in the rules. Yeah. But if a person understands the system, now the same person can live in the system and turn everything around by his faith. Yeah. Because the person who is in faith conquers the world. Yes. So the person in faith, he is using the weapon which is far, far superior than the weapon of the world. Yeah. So somebody will say, I don't have that faith that Jesus had. I don't have the faith that the apostles had. I have very small faith. Again, you are wrong. Because in 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 1, 2 Peter chapter verse, chapter 1, verse 1. Yeah, read. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have received a faith as precious as ours, through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. So, whom is he writing this letter to? Those who have received faith. Those who receive faith or, or receive faith as precious as his. Yeah, as precious as his. So, so, in other words, Peter who was in flesh and blood with flesh and blood, Jesus, mm. and those ones who have never seen Jesus in their life. Mm. But Peter is saying, there is no difference between the faith that we receive mm. and the faith that you receive. Mm. So if you have obtained the same faith in Jesus Christ as Peter and the apostles had, then Peter is writing to you. Mm. So it, does it matter which century you are in, living in? No. So it, does it mean that what they receive faith and now in this century we receive faith is it the same? Yes. So, is God willing to give this faith to everybody? Yes. Because if you see, how did you receive this faith? Through mm. what? Through, uh, he received the faith uh, through righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ. So, how did you become righteous? When you believe. Because Jesus took your sin nature yeah. And he gave you his nature, the righteousness of God. Yeah. Now, how, how did that exchange take place? By faith. by Because you believed mm. what the scripture says. Yeah. So, so, read the verse number two. May grace and peace be yours in abundance in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Now, be yours in abundance is RSV. Mm. In King James it says, Peace, uh, grace and peace be multiplied. Everybody yes. wants peace to be multiplied. Yes. Everybody yes. wants grace to be multiplied. Yes. But how will it get multiplied? When you have the knowledge of God. So how many times we tell God, please give us grace? Yeah, we always tell God like that. But ever since we started this uh, Bible study then, and we have got that understanding... Our uh, whole aspect, uh, whole prayer life has changed from the future tense to the past tense, which means from... But, but, but asking what I'm trying to say is you must have changed the tense. Yeah. Okay, that is one good thing. Yeah. But as it changed the results, 
Yes, it has changed the results. Ah, so now that means you are saying all these years I was praying. Hmm. Okay, I was getting from mercy little result. Hmm. But now from the time I followed the system, yeah. not my senses, not what majority do, not what he is doing, or yeah. that one is doing, you are imitating the commander chief who is telling you to do something and you're following his instruction. Yes. Has that changed everything in your life? Absolutely, brother. Yes. It's a huge difference. And, Black and, and, and now, now are you stressed out how much you pray or how much you believe? How much you believe? <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Previously, yeah. it was I got to I got to pray for one hour. I got to pray for one hour. I got to pray for one hour. That was like you know a rule, mm -hmm. and God also would come see. Look at him; he's yeah. coming and he's just forcing himself. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, a good now, person, yeah, mine was asking me how much. Uh, what is what time do you do you pray? You know your personal prayer. A good friend of mine uh, who is also participating in the Bible study. Very is very touched by the Bible study. So in, in earlier. Earlier, if I had I was asked this question maybe about two months back, I would have definitely given him how much time I pray. But today, I don't uh, have an answer to that because I don't. Because uh, the whole know. day, because the whole day you are marinated in the word. Yes. The whole day you are speaking to yourself the word. Yes. So the whole day your mind is full of God's word rather than full of problems. Yes, God's word. So that is that is what the difference which has happened in my life. You know that uh, you know that. My, so so now, am I am I troubling you, brother? <laughs> no, you are not. You're so not. for people, it might be looking trouble, but at, has it changed your life? Yes, it has definitely changed. So it life. looks like you are in a boarding school, but praise God, you are disciplined. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that is a big difference. You know, earlier I used to look at okay, I have to do my personal prayer for one hour personal prayer or so much of Bible reading. I used to feel guilty. It now, now it is a totally a different, uh, you know, attitude for me. You know, it's not that you know, I'm not, I don't feel guilty if I don't do something, right? So that is the biggest change uh, which has happened in my life. I'm sure that it is, it is, it is uh, would have happened in many people's life as well. Those who are following the Bible study. So, I so did you try to change, or the word changed you? The word changed. Yes, the word. So changed. you tried to change your lifestyle, or the system changed your lifestyle? Yeah, the system changed. That is uh, the then uh, I would say that I uh, also cooperated. I also cooperated with the Holy Spirit. You know, you know, you know what happens, brother. Mm. The more and more you get. Uh, okay. Now, if you overeat, mm. will you put on weight? Yes. Correct. Yeah. Because there is excessive calories stored by your body. Correct. In the same way, if you overeat the word of God, will you put overweight in your spiritual life? <laughs> I don't, I don't. Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. yeah. Your, your spirit becomes so strong. Okay. Now when the, when the enemy is coming anywhere close, it doesn't even affect you. Like it is like a bulldozer dying. It's gone. Yeah. So, so that is what. So the one word really turned me around is this, uh, you know, 1 Corinthians 3.16. My body is the temple of God's Holy Spirit. God's Spirit is dwelling in me. So, so sin has no right. So each time when I say this prayer, I imagine the Holy Spirit as the fire, the fire burning inside of me. When the when the fire is burning, no, nothing can come closer, right? So like the Sharu, Sharu gives that example of when you are, when you put the stove in the kitchen, the small, uh, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, cockroaches, which it can never come closer to the fire. So that is uh, my imagination. When I say that my body is the temple of God's Holy Spirit and the Spirit of God is dwelling in me, I imagine that the fire of the Spirit is burning inside of me. And even if I don't see it with my naked eyes, the spiritual beings can see it with their naked eyes, with their eyes. And they, ca they cannot come near to me, you know, as long as the fire is burning inside of me. So that is that is one confidence which uh, that is one prayer which I do, you know, every day and every time. And it is like that uh, my my you know ejaculatory prayer. So any concern, any you know, I'm not saying that you know I have I'm out of all this. But whenever there is a kind of element of uh, doubt, element of fear, element of you know uh, you know uh, being of offended, all this comes in. I immediately 
claim this word. I immediately say this word and say, so, uh, you know, offensive nature has no right over me. So this has become a big uh, turning point in my life, in my spiritual walk in this season. So, you know, thank you. Brother, brother, excuse me. Yeah. Um, we have learned a lot. The, the, we have learned a lot through the system and through the teachings. But uh, we would like to learn from you uh, how to pray sometimes because each time you have prayed over a situation, it is so different. We have yet to learn how to pray like that. We know the scriptures, but could you okay, please? Okay. Could you please? Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. Uh, Let me ask you: Are you working? Are, are you cooking food? Yes. So. Are you making your own recipes? Uh, yes, sometimes. Okay. You got the main recipe and then you are adding something more to suit your taste, right? Yeah, true, true. Every scripture is an ingredient in your kitchen. Yes. You put a, Okay, I'll, 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 I'll give you one incident which will really... You will say, wow, okay? Now, this person is in Bangalore. He joined a JCLM, new. Okay, so he his father had given the property on a rent, and that person at this time, in this this time, he is giving him hundred rupees rent for a big bungalow. Mm. Okay, mm. what must be the feeling of that person coming and giving him hundred rupees rent every month and staying in a big bungalow? Mm. Okay, yeah. and repairing and all, also complaining your bungalow is. This is there and that is there. Mm. That fellow wants to go and hammer that. And she's a lady, okay? Mm. Living alone. So he thought, if I trouble her now, day and night, she'll leave and go. So he started troubling her day and night. You know what she said? I will die, but not leave and go. You try all your stunts. Mm. So now, he got irritated. And that's the time we were distributing the book so he started taking the book and started, uh, you know, started praying. Now, as he was praying, he realized that I must love my enemies. Okay. So he stopped troubling her. Some of the gundas also said, we can make this place empty if you give us so much money. He said, no, I don't want to go in that. So he started taking the scripture. Thank you, Lord, for your presence goes with me everywhere I go and I have rest in you today. Okay. Now, that scripture, thank you, Lord, that your presence goes with me everywhere I go and I have rest in you today. Now, does it talk about property? No. It has got nothing to do with property, right? Yes. So, he found the scripture giving him so much of rest to his mind that he said it not because of the property, but he was totally feeling peaceful and all that. So every time he would look at that lady, he would say, Lord, thank you for blessing her. Thank you, Lord, for changing her. Thank you, Lord, for transforming her. And he went on to saying the scripture. They went for one week. The whole family went one week to some place for picnic. In one week time, God only knows what happened. When he came back, this lady came and spoke to him and said, I want to hand over the house to you. You pay me this much lump sum and I'm ready to go. And what she demanded was peanuts. Peanuts. He doesn't know what exactly happened in that one week. She gave everything, signed everything and she went away. And he came and told me, I don't understand. I did not pray for the property. I was praying for my own peace. And God changed her, which for years she would not be changed. That's why I'm saying, brother, now, we also know a lot of scriptures we have learned over, a, uh, over the years. But we may be using now in a, circum, in a situation like this, probably I might pray uh, Psalm 2.8. Ask where God says, uh, ask and I will make the nations your heritage. But when we hear you praying practically, it makes a lot of difference. That, um, uh, that, imp that uh, result is very different on us. Uh, so please, I'm saying to pray for two situations in a week, probably two people, whoever can come up. And when you pray, we okay, learn okay, so let's much take from that. Okay, let's take Rosalind. Yes, Rosalind's case. Oh, okay, Rosalind's case. Yes. Lord Jesus, I know that life and death is in the power of my tongue. 
So as long as I'm speaking the word, I'm speaking like. Yeah. So I thank you, Lord, for anointing my tongue that I'm a prophet of my own life. Do you know we are all prophets and prophetess? Because I shall have whatever I say. Lord, all that you're asking me is to believe in my heart and speak it out of my mouth. So I believe with my heart that because I'm anointed now, like, Je like Jesus, I take authority over this tumor and I curse it in the name of Jesus and I command it to die right from the root. Father, I see with my eyes of faith that you have answered my prayer and I declare it that in the name of Jesus, my daughter is completely healed. The tumor has been uprooted and my baby is completely set free. Thank you, Lord. You said whatsoever I desire when I pray, believe that I have received it and it shall be mine. Your word also said, forgive everyone so that my heavenly father will forgive you. So father, I do not have any hope to grudge against anybody. I release them. I bless them. I've got nothing to do with anybody who has come against me. I bless them in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father. All medical reports have changed. Everything is in my, in my baby's favor. And as the Psalm 91 says, with long life, you will satisfy me. I thank you, Lord. I declare with long life, you have blessed my daughter. A satisfied life, a healthy life, a prosperous life, a successful life, anointed life, nothing broken, nothing missing in her life. Lord, I thank you that she is a mighty woman of God and what this affliction had come to kill her. Lord, I thank you that learning the system of faith, the principles of faith, my baby has become a giant killer. She has become a tumor killer. And I thank you that she has got a powerful healing ministry where she is going around and testifying how she killed tumor and she's going and teaching others how to kill tumor in her life. Thank you, Father. It is, it is a beautiful moment, Lord, that you have given us a mission. You have given us a vision. You have given us a purpose. You have given us an assignment. And I take this as a part of my life in the glorious and mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. And amen. Amen. So what you amen. You brother. Scriptures and scriptures and scriptures. You did not even pray for a healing. Yes. Brother, I'm telling you, this prayer of yours will have more effect, impact, on all the people who are here right now, more than maybe two classes or three classes of Bible study. This one prayer, like this once a week, will teach us I can so pray much. Every day. You, Praise you God. Answer, we can pray every day. Praise God, because then we all of us will get an interest. Listen, listen, oh, I listen, must listen, learn listen. the scriptures. I must listen, learn. Listen, listen. That's why that is why I know that <clears throat> white book is a book called Thermostat. In that you don't find one line, even one line. Like a thermometer. Yeah. See, even no, in an intercession, no, even in an intercession, we'll say, God, you see so many people are suffering. As if he doesn't know. So, Rose, I will uh, vouch for that because if in that uh, in that uh, white book, there is a prayer from page number 72 onwards. There are two sections. One is the Thanksgiving prayer and the prayer for children. These are one of the most powerful prayers that I have seen, especially for the children. You say that a prayer for 10 pages are there. That is absolutely, and this is exactly the way brother has prayed. Once you get used to this prayer style, you God will anoint you only to pray like that. And I would strongly recommend all those people who have got children to start praying using this word, which it is printed in that, in that book. It is nothing but the word of God. Brother, Jones, but, you but, cannot value that book, you know. Yeah, we have made lakhs of books and printed. Now, by God's grace, we are sending on a PDF on the mobile so that on the mobile it's there with you anywhere. Yeah, and and Two. take one one virtue. Don't take too many prayers. One for one virtue, you get go on bombarding, bombarding, bombarding till it becomes flesh in you, that you can see it. Actually, actually, you can see it. Now, for example, when Brother Joe woke me up today. Uh, with how much my body is not ready because I slept only one hour before. Okay. So from mm -hmm. the whole circle has gone from yesterday to now one hour I slept. So that, and I kept the mobile so close. So when it rings now, it should ring right into my ears because I've got a problem. Even if a trumpet blows, I will not get up. <laughs> and I'm saying, Lord, please help me. I put an alarm, two alarm. 
Plus, I told you, brother, please, today I am in trouble. You got to help me. Please wake me up. Please call me. Okay. He called twice, but I did not pick up. See. But the Lord woke me up. Now, when I started, how was I? But as the word began to grow and grow and grow. Now, will, will anybody say one hour before look at the state, how it was, and look at the state now? Now look at now look at Jos. His son has come and resting nicely on his father's back. Okay, the old Jos would say, hey, hey, hey. "Now look at this Jos. He's saying, why one? Let everybody come. <laughs> I'm at peace. Yes. The son is at peace. The father is at peace, and we are also at peace because now he's focused over here. <laughs> it's all the mindset. It's all. It's all your your sister." I want to say your relationship. If somebody is saying, what scripture should I speak? I'll say, no, forget about the scripture. Get into a relationship with God day and night and you will enjoy scriptures. You will enjoy studying the word. You will enjoy every moment. And wherever you get the opportunity, you are looking not at yourself. You are saying, come on, I got one and a half hour to give something to these people which will bless these people. So now I will use that time for somebody else. True. Brother, I have the relationship uh, because I've been with you also for many, quite a number of years. I'm talking about the other people, some of them on this. I'm sure if uh, Rosalind just keeps playing this uh, prayer that you prayed just now, that child will definitely be healed, brother. She can just keep on praying, playing it over and over again. And she can also pray like the way you prayed. And she will be covering all the scriptures rather than we all have the book. And we would have given her the scripture like, okay, like Jesus, you uh, uh, curse the fig tree. And uh, so I'm also cursing the tumor. There's a lot of difference because we, we still need time to reach your, you know, because you're at a different level. So that no, no, impact no, no, is what I'm no, saying. No, no, I, I, no, no, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell yeah. you. Who are the ones who grow, you know, like Sharu? I'll tell you why. She got a small seed of success. That small seed of success was like Elijah saw a small cloud and mm. she jumped out of her seat and said, I got it. Yes, and Rosalind's going to say the same thing. Now oh, she, she, has to, she will she has experience to success. Say, she has to, now, 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 my question is, according to what we prayed, is the tumor there or gone? Gone. So now she has to go and search for others who have got tumor and pray with them and teach them. True, brother. She will. She will have that confidence. But when she, uh, you know, when she prays like you have prayed, it takes little time probably. So that's what I'm saying. We all have the book and we have the scriptures of healing. But there's a lot of difference till we learn to pray like pray like you do with that confidence. So once a week, at least, please pray for somebody like this. Every day, it every helps. day, every day, every day. One person lift hand. We will. We'll have prayer every day. Why? Why wait for one week? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, brother. <laughs> Thank you. Because, you know, even the other day you prayed for those people in Australia, uh, Dubai, I think, who had lost, who had losses for so many years. But, you know, you taught them, to, you prayed and they prayed like that. And what a difference it made within one month. So that's what I'm trying to say. Scriptures we all have. See, see, if you learn, if you come to this breakfast, no, there's this Hindu girl from Africa. Mm. Okay. She has come only, th th today is the third day. Okay. She doesn't, uh, she did not like the Catholics because of some bad experience. So she got baptized in some other denomination. Okay. So I am explaining to her and I'm taking her on a journey which is very, very irritating. But she stood the ground and she sat down through the hole and I said, see, if you're getting offended, I'll stop. She said, no, 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 I want to learn. So she learned. Okay. Then she said, I want the gift of tongues. I said, if I pray over you, you will say, this brother prayed and got the tongues. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to give you only the video link. You go, you study, and you do exactly what is there. And tomorrow you come and tell me that you're speaking in tongues. It's a deal. So she said, yes, I will do it. She went. She, she was watching the video as soon as the class got over. Okay. She started vibrating and she started speaking in tongues. Now the husband got scared that some evil spirit has come. Okay? So he took a video and showed her what she did. 
Now, when she was watching the video, the husband wanted to see who is this Indian who is talking to his wife. Okay. So he also was listening. Now, she went to sleep, beautiful sleep, and the husband woke up from his sleep. Do you know what happened? The husband started praying in tongues. He could not sleep. And when they went to get their report in this days, the report said cancer is completely gone out of the husband's body. There's not even a trace of cancer. Now, now this lady came. She's a young girl. She came because somebody told her, you are frustrated. Because see, in her life was everywhere is spiritual warfare. See, in my preaching, you will hardly hear me even speaking once about the demons. I'll be speaking about how powerful God is, how much he loves you and all that. There are other places where she is going it's all about spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare. So everywhere she's seeing, she's saying, the demons are attacking me. So the mind is full of demons. So I had to break that and say it were, how much God loves you, you only focus on that. Leave the demons where they are, you only focus on that. So when you are staying continuously in the presence of God, the demons who have been attacking you, they will have to leave. Just three days. We did not pray for her or anything. She only did the homework. She only came with the result. And she's saying, then I asked her, now do you love the Catholics? She said, I've got nothing against the Catholics. But you know, then I said, now what do you think? Catholics can preach? Mm. She mm. said, the Catholic is preaching better than everywhere I went. So I said, don't take a title of a person. When you take a title, you have condemned that person. Yeah. It's not the title of a person. It is what that person is speaking that decides mm. whether it's right or wrong. Yeah. The title has got nothing to do. Yeah. So then she became a good friend of Catholics. Yeah. No, this is exactly what uh, uh, God. Guru and I have been, have been experiencing in the last uh, two years. Uh, opportunities to talk to priests and uh, nuns and and for them they they know a lot of a uh, lot of this uh you know a lot of bible and uh spiritual things but then when you open this truth to them many of no, us they don't know yeah they don't know they that, don't know brother yeah they're the truth they is, know about a scripture yeah. but how the scripture actually applies in your life and works yeah. that is where is a problem yes and that is why I tell people this. See, please, I, I, I give me two minutes, two minutes, two minutes, two minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so now, do you understand how the interpretation comes? Yeah. <laughs> Joe's laughing, I think. <laughs> no, the interpretation is when you say, just give me two minutes. Now, yeah. What was I saying? I forgot. No, no, no. no I forgot what I wanted God to say. And then. Yeah, uh, no, 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 something. When you make this your lifestyle, no? Correct. And if somebody says, how long do you pray? You'll be wondering, how, how much time should I say I pray? Because the studying of the word is my prayer. Yeah, correct. And, and the best part about studying of the word is, God is talking to me. Mm. And after the study, when I respond to him with my own words, is my I'm talking to God. Yeah. So if I've got 80% God talking to me and 20% I talking to God, I will profit tremendously. Yes. But now what our prayers are, 100% I'm talking to God. Yeah. And God, before he can talk, my time is up. One hour is over. We'll meet you tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and for everybody, I'll tell again and again. Sharu, that day, if come on, one day you should fix her up again, brother. <laughs> she's very, she's very busy, you know, uh, executing. She's there in the rosary. In fact, uh, if uh, you know, more, lot so of, tell her, tell her one day to just shift from there to yeah. here one day. Yeah. And give us the new tips. What is happening? Yeah. You know that is that is what is encouraging. Yes. Yes. You, you imagine if I get encouraged by that one day, what she spoke. 
yeah. how many others will be encouraged yes ha huh? brother jos yes yes okay yes, today i have shot by too much time yeah. and i am putting my hand up now yeah so let us pray father we thank you for this uh, evening for all that we have learned that all all we have taught us we thank you for brother johnson and all the team members we bless uh, them in your name thank you lord for bringing us together once again we thank you jesus amen okay brother thank you brothers and sisters we will see you tomorrow god bless you all see you bye bye bye